Welcome back out to the shop. Here we have the beautiful Winchester Model 61. It is a joy and a pleasure to fire this firearm. For me, every 22 I compare to this one and they've yet to really have one that really stacks up. Now this one does happen to be built and manufactured in 1961 and that is just a coincidence. It was introduced in 1932. Now, as you'll notice, the Model 61 is missing something that its predecessors had. This does not have an exposed hammer. It does have a hammer, it's internal. Due to competition that was coming from Marlin and from Remington with sleek designs, the exposed hammer was uh, a little bit dated. Winchester felt that they needed a new streamlined, modern looking rimfire rifle to sell. This was marketed as a youth rifle and this was the design. Now it is a beautiful design. You'll notice that large uh, screw, it's, it's knurled on it. You know, that screw right there, that's a, a takedown screw. All Model 61s are takedown. You undo that screw, the stock removes from the receiver in the barrel for easy transportation. Or you just put that in a gun bag and you have easy transportation without taking anything apart. So they manufactured these from 1932 to 1963, I believe. This was in the last couple years of their production, and I do find myself very fortunate to have it. It is cold outside. I've got the heater going on to try to keep my little fingies and toesies warm, and so that I can be out here and also make it back into the home without getting hypothermia. Now this particular one is special, and not only because it is a Model 61, and because in itself it is a wonderful shooter a great design but this was my father's first rifle and so he got that way back in the olden days you know when it was horse and buggies and all that fine stuff and luckily they did know how to make a fine firearm he was a lucky recipient of that one christmas morning i've toted this around since my teenage days and blasted away many rocks and targets throughout the years i do not know how many uh, critters this thing hunted successfully for my father in his hands and the little farm town that he grew up in. And I do not recall how many critters I've been able to take that I was able to bring home and put into the freezer for my family with this gun, but it has been plenty. Now this also became a coyote slayer just a few years back. It has taken two coyotes from about uh, 200 yards, but the dang thing was running. And I'd take my first shot, and about 10 feet behind the coyote, I'd see a plume of dust. And so what I did is just continued to fire. But it did take me about 10 shots before I really was able to zero in how far to lead the animal. Uh, gave it the proper lead, took a shot, and the coyote dropped. And then we happened to stumble on another coyote that day, completely on accident. But uh, it was a good thing to be able to get rid of such a, a foul, verminous animal terror of the seven seas. We talked about the feature of the takedown stock. So it's got a captive screw, just undo that. Trigger assembly and the stock come off. Now inside we have ourselves our, our bolt. Takes a little bit of finagling, pull that back and slide it straight back out. Then you have yourselves the bolt with the firing pin up top. Now on this one, the firing pin does have uh, a ridge here so that the firing pin can only go so far in. It can't go too far. And so it is safe to dry fire. Now, I know people get afraid of dry firing roof fires and all this stuff. And that is true. There are some that you must not dry fire, but just like this and like the Ruger, oh, what is that one called? The one, oh, it's kind of a rare one, the 1022 they are safe to dry fire. Yeah, you're gonna end up dry firing it to find out that you're empty, right? It's just the nature of the beast, okay? You may be better than me, but I'm worse than most. And then we just have our, our milled receiver and the barrels into it, and we have a tubular magazine. Now I cannot remember how many bullets this holds, so we're gonna do an experiment and find that out, but I believe I can't remember if it holds 14 or 13 with plus one, somewhere in there. We're also gonna test out how many 22 shorts that this one can fire. The particular one is safe to fire 22 shorts, 22 long or long rifle. So as with all standard pump actions, 
As the pump slides back, it has this arm here that actuates the bolt. And if all goes well, it sends lead screaming at 1,200 feet per second at the designated target. You load up the gun. It's got a bunch of 22s. This represents the 22 in the magazine. So the bolt goes forward, grabs onto a 22, pulls it back, raises it up. Bolt goes forward, it chambers this round. As it's chambering one round, then it picks up another. Pulls it back again. This depresses internally. This pulls back. That's your ejector rod. This is getting pushed forward all at the same time. And that, that's how that cycles. So there you have it. There's the basic operation of how this uh, bolt and everything works. Very simple, but uh, very elegant. Now you'll notice there's very nice uh, finishing, very nice machining on the bits and parts that you can see. On the internals though, it's a little bit rough. I would have liked to have seen everything polished and machined great. It's just one of those things. Once again, cost prohibitive, right? In order for them to do, to put a nice uh, fine finish on this whole thing, it would have made it considerably more and, and probably would have excluded it from being an affordable youth's rifle. After it moves forward, it does tilt up slightly so that this locking lug can fit into this depression inside that receiver so that it can safely shoot. Let's get to getting. All right, we're gonna push this slide back. So we slide that down in there, it drops into place. So the question is, is how many rounds will this hold? Let's find out. See that little twist there, get it out of out of battery for lack of a better word. Pull this out. Okay, let's count these down. We've got one, nine, ten, nineteen, twenty. Now twenty-two long rifle. Six, thirteen, fourteen rounds. So hopefully you can see that. Right there, Winchester Model 61, 22 short, long or long rifle. Get your Winchester proof marks on the barrel and the receiver. This is a thing of beauty. Now on these, because this is a take down gun, a lot of handwork had to be done on these, is my understanding, to ensure that the, the trigger housing group would always mate successfully with the barrel and receiver group and that uh, everything was all honky-dory and butamous, just like it should be. Uh, so here is your captive screw, which allows you to, to easily take this down in the field, and tighten it up, and have a nice secure fit. Here is your release for your slide, so that even if you have cocked it and it's locked into place, you press down on the slide release, and that uh, ensures the hammer cannot go forward right there and allows the slide to, to, to move back and either eject the loaded round or to um, open the chamber up to accept a new round if it is on an empty chamber without having to dry fire. Now we have handled this with live ammunition. I will check one last time to ensure there is no more ammunition in here just to be safe. To remove this stock here, there are no visible screws or anything on there to hold the stock. Uh, in place. That is accessed through the back side of the stock and you remove these two screws off the butt. And look at that. That's interesting. They've got the Model 72 butt plate. Um, I guess back then, they're still doing the same thing they do now at car companies. They utilize the same parts and pieces to give you a budget price. This screwdriver is not long enough to go into there, but there's a flathead screw that will allow for access into releasing this trigger housing from the stock if you had need to do so. That has not been off for a very, 
very long time. Now to put this back together, you're gonna make sure that this tab here connects into the receiver right there. You could use a, a quarter or a nickel or something in there, tighten that up. That bolt comes over here, it's flush on this end. Nice secure fit, there's no wiggle in that. It's tell me that that is not just a beautiful gun right there. Um, if it's not your cup of tea, that's all right. But for me, uh, this thing, this thing is one of the greatest firearms ever manufactured. Check that, all is clear. So there you have it, the one, the only Model 61. Nice, clean, smooth, sleek lines, pump action, always reliable, always on target.